Darren Coleman. I'm the founder and managing consultant of UK-based agency Wavelength Marketing. I'm keen to support this fundraiser for the Samaritans with this isolated talk. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you get some value from it. And more importantly, I hope it encourages you to put some money into the kitty for the Samaritans. So today I'd like to talk about brand growth, creative work and chocolate fire guards. A bit of a weird topic, so let me talk you through it. So with this talk, I want to do two things in terms of helping you. First, I want to help you to deliver creative work that drives brand growth. A regrettable amount of creative work actually isn't on brand and so it doesn't drive brand growth. And the reason for that isn't down to the abilities of the creative that's translating the brand. It's actually down to the way that the brand has been defined. And more times than not, that relates to poorly articulated brand values. Which leads me to the second point. I'd like to focus on helping you to help your clients define great brand values. So I'm aware there are other facets of a brand, but I would rather do less well during this talk and focus on brand values. So based on my 25 years worth of branding experience, great brand values have the following five characteristics. They're unique, they're specific, they're active, they're deliberate and they're balanced. So I want to talk you through that during the course of today. So, apparently a goldfish has got a short memory, a couple of seconds. So my question is, what were the five characteristics of great brand values that I just outlined? Can you remember? So they're unique, they're specific, they're active, they're deliberate, and they are balanced, okay? So, Regrettably, a lot of brand values are a bit like a chocolate fire guard, useless. So what I want to try and do is give you some practical tips for how to articulate brand values that are useful and are clearly articulated because then it means the creative work that you do is defensible. If values are broad and have been poorly articulated and broadly articulated, then it's no surprise that a lot of perfectly creative design work fails to meet clients' expectations. But that doesn't lie with the creative work. It actually lies with the quality of the way the brand has been articulated. So that's why I want to focus on helping you define brand values that are useful and not chocolate fire guards. So how do brand values drive growth? Well, here's a, a useful bit of research that was conducted um, in the Netherlands for clothing and banks, but we've used the, the scale for this with a number of clients and across a number of sectors and have seen how it plays out. So what this shows is that when values are congruent, when they're aligned, so when your values synchronize with customers, it drives satisfaction, it drives trust, it drives effective commitment, in other words, the emotional connection, but also value congruence drives loyalty in terms of word of mouth, willingness to pay more, and repeat, in per repeat purchase intention. So that's the first point. But there's also a domino effect that satisfaction drives trust, trust drives emotional commitment, and commitment drives these facets of loyalty. So we've used this scale that underpins um, this framework a number of times with clients, and it plays out well. And we've seen this have an effect. But if you want to use values to drive these performance metrics, the values need to be clearly articulated and well understood in the first place or else you're going to have chocolate fire guard brand values. So here's some help for how to get going. So brand values, firstly, 
you need to think about them being unique, specific, active and deliberate. And then once you're happy that you've got values that meet those four criteria, the next stage is to come up for air and see whether they're balanced. Balanced in terms of having functional and emotional appeal, but also balanced in terms of being core and peripheral. So let's look at those in a bit more detail. So in no specific order, great brand values should be unique, specific, active and deliberate. So by unique, I mean they need to be distinctive because if you have distinctive values, it plays out in terms of a distinctive brand. But a regrettable number of brand values are generic and then that leaves scope for misinterpretation, but also results in generic brands. So some time ago, we were fortunate enough to work with a financial institution in Southeast Asia. And one of their values that came out through the ideation sessions was to be humble. This immediately struck a chord internally, <clears throat> excuse me, which was important because it was a services brand. But then when that value was validated externally, it really chimed with local cultural sensitivities in the communities they served. Another one was a healthcare brand that wanted to be attentive. It really struck a chord in terms of a, a healthcare brand that's attentive really is everything that you would ever want from a healthcare brand. So firstly, you want values that are unique. Secondly, the values need to be specific because that reduces the ambiguity and misunderstanding. So I really feel for creatives when they're given a brief and the values tend to include words such as quality and professionalism. Quality to me and quality to you could be two very different things. The same with professionalism. So it's always a good idea to try and drill down for a bit more detail. So maybe consider reframing professionalism as being dedicated or diligent. Far more specific. And it also means that you have a defensible position when it comes to sharing your creative work. That brings me to the next point that values, whether you like it or not, influence behavior because values influence beliefs and beliefs influence behavior. But if you want to compel behavioral change, whether you like it or not, values look to compel behavioral change, buy more, eat more, drink more, drink less, go here, don't go here. You need to get in at the values level. So if you want to compel behavioral change through values, you need to focus on cause, not effect. So for example, a lot of brands have a value of teamwork. It's debatable whether teamwork is a value or whether teamwork is a behavior. If you want to compel teamwork behavior, then you need to think about values that trigger that behavior. So it's more powerful to frame a value as an active adjective. So for example, you could be collaborative. So we're collaborative, which means that we believe in working together, which promotes teamwork. So by focusing on the value as an active adjective, you're really getting to the heart of things that, that compel the behavioral change, which you want the brand to induce. Finally, in this part of it, you need to think about values that are deliberate. So you want them to serve a unique purpose um, in as much that they are related, but don't overlap. So in many ways, you want values to act like a family of brothers and sisters. So they fit together and work together nicely and they feel re related. They feel cohesive. But on the flip side, you don't want values that do the same thing. So in that respect, you don't want values that act as identical twins. 
So with regards to values that may stand out, some time ago we worked with a corporate firm, corporate law firm, and they had values about being insightful and decisive, but also as well, they had a value of being sociable. And it really struck us as quite an odd value for um, a corporate law firm. You don't go and deal with a corporate law firm to be sociable, but really what they were trying to get to was to be accessible. You know, they didn't want to be aloof, so we reframed the value in that way. A while ago as well, we worked with a fashion brand, a youth fashion brand that wanted to be vibrant and energetic. And we had the discussion around, well, if you're vibrant, you're energetic, and if you're energetic, you're vibrant. So you're almost using some credits at the bank with regards to, <clears throat> excuse me, the values that you've got. So what we did is we thought about some other values that would be relevant and then we tested them with the target market and actually being emotionally um, emotionally intelligent, that was the one, emotionally intelligent chimed with the, the, the target market. So this is the first stage. You want to be thinking about values that are unique, specific, active and deliberate. And it's a bit of a... Uh, a messy process because you need to go through each and then go back and check whether you've kind of met those criteria but once you have then the next stage entails thinking about values that are balanced <clears throat> so what you need to do is come up for air once you've got the active unique specific and deliberate values or they meet those criteria and then think well are the values going to meet core, peripheral, functional and emotional criteria? So what I mean by that is the functional and the emotional are fairly self-explanatory. But what you want is you want some core values that won't change. Yeah, today, tomorrow, for example, uh, the body shop will have had a value of being socially responsible. And it's, in theory, core to the brand to this day. But then when you think about a peripheral brand, a peri put my teeth in, a peripheral brand value, this is one that you can fine tune with time. So if you think of brands like Bentley, maybe 10, 15 years ago, they were quite conservative, quite refined. Now, if you think about the products that express the brand, they're bold, confident, so the Bentley GT, etc. So I suspect what Bentley have done is they've refined some of the peripheral values that they have. So what you want to do is think about values and have some balance in terms of core values that are functional and emotional and then peripheral values that are functional and emotional. You don't want purely emotional brands because if you don't deliver on function, you'll never ladder up to the emotional stage. So brands are primarily emotional, but don't overlook the importance of function. So a brand that I really admire for doing this is Hyundai. So when Hyundai started out, it had Hyundai Drive Your Way. Sorry, when it started out, it had Hyundai with the 80,000 mile guarantee, unlimited warranties, etc., And that instilled confidence in the functional credentials of the brand. But now that they've established the functional credentials of the brand in the category, they've laddered up more to this emotional Hyundai drive your way. So you need to cover the two. These are some examples of great brand values that I've seen through various engagements or on my, on my travels. So they tend to meet those criteria of being unique, specific, active, deliberate. But the deliberate element will come into play once you start to see which ones you have and whether there's overlap. But you can see that they're quite well defined and you could cherry pick some of these to create quite a holistic brand and then come up for air and then think about whether they're core, peripheral, functional, or emotional. So if I can give you an example and ask you a question here, this is Bank of Singapore, 
And I'd just like you to think, whilst I'm talking through this, how would you describe Bank of Singapore in four or five words? In other words, what, what do you think their values are? You've come this far, but you'll never forget what got you here in the first place. Like you, we believe in the timeless value of hard work. Bank of Singapore, building on your values. So when you're thinking about the values that that creative activates, it's probably down to earth, successful, sophisticated, those types of things, because they're using visual cues the Bentley, etc. But it's also quite a down to earth brand because you know, the guy's not too high in the head to get out of his car and help the guy, his driver, roll up his sleeves and give him a hand. <clears throat> so that's an example of how a financial services brand has articulated some quite clear values and brought them to life. And they've played out this campaign for years across Asia Pack. So I've tried to give you some advice on how not to create values that are chocolate fire guards. In other words, values that are useless by thinking about how they can be unique, specific, active, deliberate and then balanced. And it may well be that you need to work with your clients to help them. And, and there's no harm in that because ultimately it will enable you to deliver more effective work that the can then drive growth by bringing the values to life in an accurate way. So what I've tried to do today is help you deliver creative work that drives brand growth. So there's a study there that we looked at about the alignment of values and how that plays out through various um, performance metrics, specifically brand equity metrics, but also to help you to help your clients define great brand values, because a lot of the time, creative work doesn't deliver, not because of the quality of the creative person doing the work or the creative delivered, but because of what they're given to work with. So my advice would be to work closely with your clients and think about how they can deliver values that are unique, specific, active, deliberate and balanced. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, keep safe. Keep going. It's the it's the only option at the moment. And keep in touch. My mail is below. I'll be very happy to hear from you. But um, finally, I'd just like to say, yeah, you know, if you've got the means to do it, please um, give generously and support the Samaritans. OK, take care. Bye now.